What started off your interest in CB radio and all radio communications in general? A father, a mother, a granddad, an uncle or a friend? Of course, we all have a very different story to tell. However, I am sure you will agree that more than anything, modern TV shows and movies have probably encouraged more people into the hobby than anything else. In the 1970s, there were a few pivotal films and TV shows that really put the CB radio front and centre and really helped to show how useful mobile communications could be, long before any realistic, truly mobile phones were easily available. Shows such as Moving On in 1974 and the films Smokey and the Bandit in 1977 and Convoy in 1978 all helped to propel the CB radio from a useful working man's tool into a must-have car accessory for most. We're going to take a quick look at just one CB, one scanner and one antenna from probably my favourite film of that genre and that's Burt Reynolds' character's radio from the movie Smokey and the Bandit. I won't break down the movie in too much detail in case some of the younger viewers haven't seen it, but it's a fun mix of car chases, CB radio, jokes, pretty ladies and beer. What's not to love about that? In the movie, Bandit, played by Burt Reynolds, accepts a challenge to help drive cases of beer across state lines. And to do this, he requests an advance to buy a Trans Am car to help divert attention away from his buddy who is driving the truck laden with the beer. And to keep in communication with both his buddy and the police, he gets his new car fitted out with both a police scanner and a CB radio. Now, interestingly, the build sheet for the car from the manufacturer stated that as standard it did come with a GM CB radio fitted. However, in the movie it's very clear that this has been changed. This was very likely due to its appearance not being acceptable to the director or one of the crew. I can't play the movie clips on here for copyright reasons, but I can use the stills under a fair use. So here we can see one of the clearest shots of the radio about 18 minutes into the movie. You can see the police scanner, the Pace Scan 10 for you, sat above the CB, and you will also notice that the radio isn't even on. At this point, he's supposedly listening to his buddy in the truck. This is a simple and rather clumsy oversight that I've seen in many movies before and since. We can see that Bandit's radio is the Pace CB166. Here are the rig picked details for the radio. And here it is, a fairly basic radio for the time. You'll see it has a mechanical uh, dial there with a, a visual printed indicator. Uh, and only a, ch a 23 channel radio this one. It did later come out in a 40 channel variant when the FCC changed the guidelines. In fact it was later in the year that the film was released in September of 1977 that they actually changed this over so you could get this version in a 40 channel set. However the one scene in the film is very definitely uh, the 23 channel version and in fact in one scene uh, now the Ultra HD version has come out you can actually see uh, the, that it goes from uh, 22 to 23 on the actual dial so it's uh, the, there was a 40 channel version but this is definitely the 23 channel version of the radio. You will notice sat on the top of the Trans Am a distinctive antenna. This is the antenna specialist ASMR276. This was a base loaded spring antenna with a stainless steel whip. Most people mag mounted these back in the day but in the movie it's drilled to the roof of the car as can be seen here. These antennas are still available, the CB itself though is very much less so as we will find out a little bit later. Bandit's scanner was a Pace 104U, a police scanner, a simple 4 channel UHF push button scanner. Here are the limited details of it on RigPix if you are interested. And here's the details for the scanner, I'm sure these are also are available second hand for those that uh, want to pop one in the car. Uh, you might uh, have more chance of getting one of these than the CBs though and there is a service manual available for this if you do have one and you do want to get it spot on frequency but quite how useful it would be in real practical terms today I'm not so sure but there you go that's the scanner. I checked on eBay and if you want to own the CB while well, you might want to sit down examples go from between 600 to well over a thousand dollars for one of these radios some people make a sale with the antenna and the mic and sometimes even the scanner too as these are popular with the vintage car guys who want to kit out their cars with the proper authentic gear but remember when you're looking at these it's the 23 channel version and not the 40 channel version you want if you want to be screen accurate 
In the movie, the mic is in shot far more than the radio itself, and again, the stock 23-channel mic was switched to a different one, as seen in the film. Again, these film types are fussy, but not fussy enough to remember to actually turn the radio on, so it seems. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please let me know how you got into CB radio in the comments below, and uh, please like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.